Welcome to the RC Aerobatics Podcast. Today we get to speak with David Moser. David is an IMAC pilot who flies in the Unlimited class and is our current national champion. We talk about his history, his mentors, his practice routines, and what he has going on now. Thanks for listening to the show. Please like and subscribe. Hey Dave, welcome to the show. Hey Rich, thanks for having me. Man, I'm I'm excited to have you on. I think it's been since uh, I guess since last last year last year since I've seen you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Been been a long time. Um, I'd like to start talking a little bit about um, uh, where you're from, uh, how you grew up, and uh, and that kind of stuff. So so whereabouts are you from, Dave? I I was born and raised in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. Wow. Yep. And, uh, I lived there for the majority of my life. And, um, I would say about 23, I decided to, uh, to move and went to, uh, South Carolina and then to Tennessee, back to South Carolina, Tennessee again. And then now I'm in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. So kind of, kind of been around a little bit. No doubt. None of those other places sound as warm as, uh, as West Palm Beach. (laughs) No, and uh, growing up in Florida, you still don't get used to the cold weather. So, <laughs> yeah, though I guess it's um, it's nice for practicing airplanes. It's kind of windy down there, huh? It sure is. It sure is. <laughs> yep. And uh, I mean, a, a cold front uh, that's that far south is you know seventy five degrees. So you <laughs> fly around. It's kind of a a luxury, if you will. Yeah, that, that's that's even uh, warmer than we get in in Louisiana. We we took a little cooler than that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, um, how did you get started in in RC? What what got you into the sport? So, um, I grew up uh, wa- walking through um, my grandparents' house, my dad's house. You know, seeing the planes hanging from the ceiling. And uh, they they got into it in the late eighties and uh, kind of. Uh, fizzled out. Um, I guess I came along and uh, my dad kind of uh, turned his attention towards, you know, raising me and stuff. But uh, I was probably 10 years old and uh, my grandpa would get this plane down for me. It was a third scale uh, Pika Waco and I'd clean it up and, you know, push it around the living room and stuff. And uh, finally, one day he uh, we came up with the plan and uh, he uh, we went to the local hobby shop and got a uh, I think it was a Hobbyco four star trainer. Oh that was, yeah, uh-huh. you know the uh, one of the original Rs. You know, came with the OS fix and a little blue head motor and a transmitter, the whole package. You know, and uh, my my dad just jumped right on board and um, we started flying and uh, went to the local uh, field called Skyhawks. It was on top of a dump and uh, <laughs> soloed there and. Uh, I ended up uh, moving up into uh, like an extra, I think it was, and my first tail dragger, that was a big thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, of, course, of course, all the uh, the uh, Sunday brunchers, you know, the uh, the hangar crew, you know, would always say, oh, man, you got to be careful with the tail draggers. Oh, whoop right around on you, youngster. You That's know? right. <laughs> so, and then uh, met these uh, two gentlemen. Uh, one, which is now, uh, my stepfather, Richie Brinus and, um, uh, Mike Zubriki. They were, uh, flying these airplanes that of course, you know, at, uh, 35% Godfrey was a huge plane back then. Right and uh, I was just intrigued and, you know, how precise and very, uh, disciplined flying, you know, and, uh, started asking questions and. My dad, of course, you know, got involved again, and he was just, it, the rest is history. I mean, they kind of took me under their wing, and we uh, we went to our first uh, IMAC contest in Christmas, Florida. I think it was October of 99, 
And that's where I uh, bumped into uh, John Schroeder and uh and uh the rest yeah the rest kind of followed followed with it so that's kind of how i got started so oh wow yeah and when you uh i asked ac this question too when you first started competing did you come in like a, a house of fire or was it kind of a a struggle and and take your lumps um i kind of always had a natural act uh with uh, eye hand coordination and the, for my first contest, I took second in basic. And, you know, at the time I was 11 or actually in 99, must have been nine, not nine. Anyway, um, I didn't understand like the rules. So like we had a loop and I just I just would do a snap at the top of it because I thought it was cool to do. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I was zeroed on, you know, and then uh, finally somebody told me you can't do that. But why not? You know, uh, that's right. So. Um, but like I said, I, I really was fortunate to have, um, good, uh, coaching, um, not only from Mike and Richie, uh, the, you know, the first couple of years, but then once I met John, um, you know, he really just became so involved in uh, my career without even me asking him to, you know, he just, yeah. he, that was just his personality and, um, so, at, you know, I, I, I really had good coaching, so I'll, I'll definitely credit, uh, that more so than, than the skill, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, 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 very good. So when you, um, I assume you went to, uh, John's summer camps at one point, huh? Yes, sir. I did. Um, so back before Clover Creek was even, uh, blink in the eye, uh, Stephen Hamilton, uh, was actually one of John's first uh, summer camp. Like I met John first, and we would he would coach me like at the uh, the contest. But then mm -hmm. Stephen and I grew up in the same area in West Palm, and um, we would go to contests together. And Stephen was actually the first one to go and stay at his house uh, for a duration of the summer, and uh, he was coaching him. I think Stephen was there for like three weeks, you know, and. Mm -hmm. Um, then, then we all go up to the Nats together. Oh, wow. Very yeah. Good. It's always nice to have a group to go up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Um, so, um, you start, I, I guess that, that kind of leads to the next question I was going to ask you is when you started the Nats. So that sounds like you started going up to the Nats fairly, fairly early, fairly, fairly young, huh? Yeah. So, uh, my first Nats was 2001. And, mm -hmm. uh, and of course I flew in sportsmen and they, um, uh, God, at the time, I think we had 67 registered pilots. It was, it was a, right. it was, it was a big event. Um, and you know, at, 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 uh, at that age and not having any experience with real, uh, big competitions like that, you know, you get built up and. You know, of course, of course, John's feeding you information. Oh man, so and so is going to be there, and oh uh -huh. man, he's practicing all summer, and it kind of like <laughs> putting a little fire under my butt to, you know, practice more and more, and and kind of drive me. And um, actually, I don't think Stephen made it that year, the first year, but but we did go up there as Team Florida. Um, uh -huh. You know, we had a uh, a practice session like a week before we were all supposed to go. Uh, myself, John, Keith Hunt, Mike Zubriki, I mean, guys that, you know, you, that kind of faded out, um, you know, but they were big, bigger names back then, you know, as far as, and of course, um, my hero growing up, uh, was, uh, Jason Shulman and he was, oh, uh -huh. I heard he was going to be there and I'm like, Oh my goodness, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> no, Oh, no. and then Peter Goldsmith was there, Mike McConville, you know, all these guys flying in unlimited. And that was just like mind blowing to see them. I think I focused more on their flights than I did my own, you know? And no uh, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. So, and then, uh, Richie, who I, uh, like I was telling you is my stepfather now, um, is, uh, was, was very, very, very prominent in, in winning the Nats that year. We, we thought, you know, he was flying the best and he was holding first place the whole time. Um, and then for some reason in, in the finals, uh, kind of got ahead of himself and, um, he, they called his name third and I'll never forget this. And you won't, you won't believe who got first place that year. Right. 
<laughs> so <laughs> uh, my uh, arch nemesis. But anyway, so they uh, they called Richie's name and he's walking back and they hadn't called mine yet. And I remember him pointing his finger. You better be next, you son of a gun. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was a crazy, a crazy year as far as uh, malfunctions. One one time or one flight, I had a uh, I had a, a hangar nine extra 300 and the uh, the elevator uh, came loose and flipped up in the middle oh, of a no. flight. And Jason Shulman was actually judging and he come running out. He goes, he goes, here, you know, let me get the transmitter. I'll land it for you. You know, I'm like, I'm like, no, it's my plane. I got it. You know? <laughs> so come in and land. And then, um, John had a, a fiber classics extra, which belonged to Jason, um, oh, wow. back up from the TOC and, and John let me fly, fly, uh, fly his plane that round. So that was, that was pretty oh, cool. Wow. Of course, after flying yeah. it, I wanted to fly it every round after that. But that's right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was, that, I, and, I remember then, competing uh, at Club. Go ahead. And then, uh, anyway, long story short, Kurt ended up kicking all of our butts that year in uh, sportsman. So, and uh, I think I think Kurt uh, has mentioned that uh, contest a few times in in some of his championship speeches, and it's it's pretty special <laughs> uh, memory for both of us. You know, no doubt. So. No doubt. It's hard. It's hard to even for me, you know, coming in a little later on to, to even imagine you and Kurt Coling both being in sportsman. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's 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 amazing. You know, I guess everybody starts has a start at one t- one point or another. Yep. Yep. Well, and uh, yeah, I think Phil Vance was the contest director that year, if I'm not mistaken. That was the first year I went, met uh, Will and Mary and Berninger, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, it's, that was, that was a, uh, uh, a stepping stone in, uh, my, uh, IMAC career for sure. Yeah. I, I've been, uh, dealing with some of the Nat stuff and, uh, Phil's going to be there again this year. Awesome. I don't know how many years he's been there, but man, he's there all the time. He sure is. All the time for sure. So at what point did, um, Clover Creek, uh uh, it get established in Tennessee and, and you guys start going to camp up there. So, um, in 2005, uh, kind of a precursor to that, uh, John still, John still owned his door company down in Florida, uh, LNS supplies. And, um, I was flying, he was flying me over there every weekend, uh, to practice for the masters. And one of the t- last times I flew over there, um, he picked me up and he was telling me that he was going to sell his company. And then somebody wanted to sell his company. I think it was Gator Doors or something like that. And he uh, wanted to move. Of course, I was upset about it because John lived in Tampa, which was so close to where I lived in West Palm. And right. um, But, I, you know, I was happy. And once he was kind of showing me some of the places he was looking at, I was like, wow, you know, you just kind of you don't, you don't think about, think about it too much at the time, but like looking back at it now, it's like, you know, seeing the start of something so great, you know? And, and so he, he told me he was, you know, wanting to, uh, make, a uh, a dream facility of his. And, mm-hmm. uh, that's, so he sold his company and, and, uh, they, they moved up to Tennessee. And, uh, I think the first camp we had was in 2006, um, this was way before the hangar was built or anything like that. We had, uh-huh. and the tent actually, we still had it up until the farm was sold, but it was the, the big pain in the ass tent we used to call it. And <laughs> you know, it took four or five people to set it up and we would set it up every morning and, you know, and, and we'd fly right there on, on the runway, you know, there's before the fairway mower, it was just a strip of grass and we would, uh-huh. we'd fly. you know, it was cool. It was Josh Jordan, myself, Stephen, um, Jim Woodward, uh, who really wasn't a kid, uh, but yeah. he uh, <laughs> came up and he definitely helped out as far as the coaching and stuff. Jim, uh, you probably know him pretty well from the pattern uh, stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I've think, seen him around, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, of course, John, Brian Luckett. Yeah. There was, I think there was like seven of us at the time. You know, kind of mm-hmm. older, older kids. I think the youngest we had was Josh, and he was thirteen or fourteen years old. Okay, yeah, I, I, I can imagine the the tent. 
uh, just knowing that John didn't shy away from from work or or having other people do a lot of work too. <laughs> Well, we got we got smart. So all we did, you know, we started instead of putting the damn tarp and everything together, we would just take the legs off and drop it down and strap it down so it wouldn't blow anywhere, you know. So there you go, there you go. Well, good deal. And at that point, what class you were flying? Um, advanced at that point, or were you already flying unlimited? I no, I was already flying unlimited. I think I uh, got into unlimited in two thousand four. I yes, that's right. Cause, okay, uh, yeah. When you when you jumped from say in two thousand four when you went from advanced to unlimited, uh, how was that transition? Did did you find that to be a big jump? Was it uh, um, a big change for you, or it just was the natural progression for you? Um, as far as the knowns, um, uh, it was a big jump. It was the only biggest jump I think was the rollers. Um, as far as instead of doing the two seventy all you know all rolls to the inside, learning how to uh, transition rudder and elevator inputs, um, you know, by changing roll directions throughout any type of, uh, uh, let me see any type of roller. It, let me, you right. know what I mean? Uh, that, that was definitely a learning curve. Um, the snaps and roll elements, uh, I don't think were too much of a difficulty back then anyway. Um, mm -hmm. uh, now it's a little bit different, um, yeah. you know. Uh, the unknowns were were definitely a learning curve. You know, it wasn't your, your typical uh, like the kind of like the the advanced knowns were similar to the unknowns. There wasn't anything that was like way out of the ordinary. Um, and mm -hmm. of course, you know, the tail slides. I was that was that was definitely right. <laughs> everybody's favorite. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, well, good deal. So when. Uh, at what point did you start uh, uh, teaching and helping? Was that it immediately uh, you were kind of doing that mentor position or was that come later on? So um, and when the first night, the first camp was in 2006. And I think to, like I would, yes, I would help out like mm -hmm. the, the guys and, and to help John out, I would help out, you know, any, uh, kids that we had in sportsmen or intermediate and actually the guys that were flying and unlimited and advanced in the camp would would it was uh expected of them to help out any of uh mm -hmm. you know the the younger class guys um and john would focus more on us focus on everybody but we would take right. some stress off of him by doing that because we knew the basics and things like that um, but I think up until when I, I would say I would, was really, uh, christened as an, a instructor when I, uh, went there in 2015, uh, when John had his first stroke and mm -hmm. that's when I kind of started learning the farm and that and the camp, which kind of came natural, uh, because mm -hmm. I had already been doing it prior not so much as i was then but definitely it, it was it was kind of natural progression uh becoming uh a, an instructor at at clover creek right and and for uh anyone who isn't familiar with john i mean he competed toc and um he was far from a slouch when it came to to uh flying and and freestyle i've seen a couple of his videos from toc and uh it's pretty he was a pretty incredible pilot himself yeah yeah he, he sure he sure was uh he's 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 competed in and uh i think his first nights was um and i tried having ashley look this up before i did this interview with you so i <laughs> they, i can't remember if it was 64 or 67 he won his first nats in the unlimited class with um not reestat but uh uh like chris craft you know, radio, yeah, like uh -huh. the, day, the proportional you know, control, the uh, uh, the first yeah. proportional controls, yeah, yeah. Back in the days where you had to build your own transmitter, yeah. So <laughs> that was pretty cool. And then uh, he took a break off of uh, flying and um, started getting into motocross. He's, I mean, he's competed in the Mint Four Hundred out there in Vegas. Uh, he's 
yeah, he's 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 done quite a quite a bit of things in his his lifetime outside of uh, RC, and uh, and then back in and then he got back into it in the late nineties. Um, I think ninety nine. He uh, he won Sportsman in uh, advance or uh, in uh, Oklahoma, Eden, Oklahoma. I think that was where the oh, okay. that Nats wow. was. Held. And uh, he kind of he'd been going to every every one of them since then up until he passed. Wow. Well, yeah. l- let me let me ask you this. But before you actually came back to, to Tennessee, you said you went to North Carolina. You lived in North Carolina. Is that right? Yeah, I was in South Carolina. South yeah. Carolina. OK, yep. what, what were you doing there? I uh, I was doing uh, HVAC install. Um, oh, OK. Yeah, I, I, I worked at Publix for seven years in Florida um, and I uh-huh. just it was a, it was a good company. I enjoyed what I did. I really did. But I wanted mm-hmm. to do something else outside. And uh, so I left Florida and went up there. My dad has always done HVAC his entire life. So he kind of hooked me up with a job there. And I was there for, I think, three, four years and uh-huh. moved all the way up into lead install. Um, so I, I enjoyed doing that. But it still it just wasn't um, wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, you know? Right. Right. And it was from there that you, uh, moved down to, uh, Tennessee, Clover Creek. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I was, I was working, uh, one day and, um, Tina, uh, Schroeder called me, actually called my father and let him know first, cause John had a hip replacement in 2015 and mm-hmm. he, um, was in recovery. Everything went well with the procedure. Um, unfortunately he had a blood clot come loose and he had a stroke coming into recovery Mm -hmm. and there was nobody out there that John had, um, some help, but his main, uh, foreman left and, uh, they needed somebody that knew what they were doing. And I just, I, I wanted to just go out there anyway, you know? So I, I naturally, I just packed up and, and went out there. Ashley and I actually went, went out there. She was living with me at the time in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. well, very good. That's, that's really interesting because that's about the time I uh, started competing. I think it was 2014 was my first contest. So, and I think 2015 was the first time I went to, uh, went to Clover Creek and it flew as a, uh, I don't know if it was, you know, I guess it was a sportsman. And I kind of had a similar similar uh, experience because I was flying a uh, a ninety three inch electric uh, AJ laser, and I had a head on with a uh, with a gentleman and and had some damage, and David Heron gave me a a forty percent Sukhoi and said, "Here, fly this." It was like, "Oh my goodness!" Wasn't it you and Thomas Young? Yes. Yeah. He put a, he, he put a big dent in my in my wing. I was I devastated. One of y'all, one of y'all landed dead center of the damn runway, and uh, yeah, yes, I, he cracked. He his was destroyed, yeah. and um, and I was able to land. As a matter of fact, I was continuing on. I I didn't know the rules, and it was still flying. So I think Thomas Young, his uh, brother, is, didn't he have a brother? Um, he had a he had a I, I don't remember. son with yeah, him. Yeah, but they had a, but one of the judges behind me was saying. You have to land. You had a midair. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> so I landed a plane. <laughs> okay. Monaco, what a, that's yeah. right. It's still there's flying. Mon- there's Monaco flapping in the wind, but it's okay. You know. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah. So, well, that. So I didn't even realize that that uh, that was about the time you uh, you were there because I I always knew you as being there, um, and I guess that's that that's why. Um, th- uh, through through your years of of being there, the the few the years that you were there, um, I know you had a lot of uh, of the older kids, but but you guys had some fairly fairly young kids, and um, uh, it just seemed to to me, I guess your experience with those kids, what you think they got out of it, because uh, I saw a lot of kids that I thought, man, it would be okay if 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 they went away and never came back, and then you go back to meet them a year or two later and it's like, man, these are some fine young men, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I guess I'm, I'm rambling through the question, but basically, you know, what, you know, how, how do you feel, you know, they, what they got out of the, uh, of the camps and being at Clover Creek? 
uh, for a lot of them and for myself, um, I think I can relate with their experience as well. It, it's, it was kind of like a once in a lifetime opportunity. And for a lot of them, uh, got to come back and experience and experience it again. Um, mm -hmm. you know, usually about 18 years old is when we would cut them loose, if you will. Uh, yeah. but not, but not out of family or anything like that. They like the, usually the camp was a month long. And, uh, as John always said, it's a, it's a preparatory camp for a national championship, not so much right. teaching somebody how to take off and land. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they, the requirements were they had to have competed in, I think a couple of, um, IMAC contests. They had to have good grades and they had to be recommended by their regional director to be even considered um, because at the time we, we would have full camps, you know, a full camp being right. 10, 10 students. And, and it was more than just um, flying, you know, we would mm. do, of course there was no cost to, to them, but in return they would help out on the farm, you know, when it, we would mow every other day, you know, and doing it by myself, it would take me a whole day to mow the whole place down. Not in, right. not in, weed whacking and edging and all the trim work that went in with it but with all of us doing it we could knock it out in an hour and a half and then go back to flying you know for the next couple right. of days but we got to do it all over again um but it was more like a family and we would all of course you, you know you had your occasional bad apples uh that just didn't mm -hmm. click and, and and fit in um but that was far and few between but we I mean, even to this day, we're all really, really close. You know, we have a, a group mm -hmm. chat, you know, and we're always in communication with each other. I mean, even as, as, as soon as recent as, you know, the last Nats we all went together with. I mean, I know last year we, we kind of went as a group, uh, but we didn't have the facility to, to practice that. But, mm -hmm. you know, like as, as recent as JJ all the way back to uh, – uh, let me see. It's probably Josh Jordan, Dean Lampron. You know, he was one uh -huh. of the, uh, yeah, uh, uh, we're all, we're all in communication with each other and, and really the best of friends. And, <clears throat> but as far as their experience goes, I think it's, it's just, it's one of a kind, you know, that we've had parents write notes, uh, just absolutely amazed of the difference in, in the change in, in their, in their child, you know, becoming, from a, you know, the enter as a child and just you leave as a, as a young man, you know, right. and, and it, it, it sets their mind for success in life. You know, I think that's what John strived for the most, you know, he instilled that in me and I tried to, to, uh, give back, you know, the same, the same type of attitude and, and, and mm -hmm. idea in life, you know, and how to, how to try to be successful. Um, but, yeah, it's it was it was definitely a one of a kind of ex, uh, experience. Yeah, no doubt. You know, a, a, another part, um, a, maybe I kind of rambled on with the answering your question, but uh, to simplify it, you know, John really um, wanted to build character, you know, with mm -hmm. with the student and try to level with them on a on a personal level and really understand how they click. And that was that was definitely a, a definitely a, a big part in teaching teaching them how to uh, how to how to fly better and how to perform RC aerobatics better is because they had to get them to re receive the information and be receptive of it, you know. And definitely right. a big a big part um, was you know uh, a schedule. You know, we would get up in the morning uh, the it, the tent would be set up, ready to go with the chairs, the airplanes fueled up, ready to go at, at 9 a.m. sharp. And if they weren't, mm -hmm. you know, all right, you'd probably get <laughs> up. And if, if one person wasn't ready to go, you know, the, the whole group's going to get punished for it. You know what I mean? Right. But it, it, we, we had to work as a team. It was very important, you know, because everybody had to – learn how to call the sequence in case so-and-so is up to fly at the Nats and you're on the other line and, Oh, well, who's going to call for me? Any, he could pull anybody, you know, and be, and right. be okay. You know? No doubt. And, and I've seen it even to the extreme. I've, I've watched you change 
I think more than one DA two hundred on a big airplane between <laughs> rounds. <laughs> yeah, we uh, that was that was a crazy year. Uh, JJ blowing his engine up like he did. He he tried. It, it, we could, we could hear it coming apart halfway through the sequence i was like listen bud i said you know you can try to make it through or you can land i said the engine's already toast and we got one and i was already telling um william jackson's father oh my god i can't remember his name jeremy jackson jeremy uh, yeah there's a da 200 in the trailer go get it there's the tools everything have it ready because as soon as the plane lands we're changing it out so I think he got up to the ninth maneuver and it find the prop just stopped. So I'm like, all right, come on and land, you know. <laughs> of, course, of course, JJ was so damn nervous as probably I'd be too. He overshot the runway and we had to walk half a mile get the damn plane. <laughs> like, come on, no man. Doubt. <laughs> We're trying to save some time here. So, but yeah, it was cool. I think we changed that motor out in uh, like under ten minutes. It was it was nuts, you know. Yeah. The- you know, it's 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 kind of crazy too because I I know you you guys uh, always made them land dead stick almost every landing. You know, I know they had lots of practice on dead stick landings. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of people get up tight when the when the when the prop starts stops moving. You know, mm-hmm. so we would and of course we had a thousand foot runway at Clover Creek they get practice on, but it was definitely a training process. You know. Usually John would go up and just shut the motor off in mid flight. Okay, what are you going to do now? Yeah, <laughs> you know. And, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I watched um Rhett program his transmitter while flying, setting trim and and programming stuff because uh John had told him several times that that you may have to do this one day, so you're going to learn it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking like, land it, we'll change it. He goes, no, 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 I got it. Click, 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 click. And it's like, yeah. holy cow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some of these kids are just whizzes with, with, those, uh, with, their, with their transmitters. Like, it, you know, I, I couldn't do it with a Futabo transmitter, but, you know, a Spectrum transmitter, you know, I just, I've always just know, known right. that. So it's like, you know, secondhand knowledge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I know, um, uh, you know, the, once you pick a transmitter, whatever it may be, um, I know my thoughts on this, but how important do you feel it is to really get to know that transmitter or the equipment in general and get the time in on it and, and really know that stuff so that something does happen? Oh, it's, it's super, it's super important, uh, for two reasons, not only for, for, for your own knowledge. So like if you're having a, an issue with something in a particular maneuver and it keeps, yawing weird or something you know it might be your 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 knife edge uh mix you know your or your, your rudder to elevator aileron mix mm-hmm. um and i find that programming that is is best done in the air um you know i i understand people want to land and make a couple percentage change and and then take back off um but i think you can really get it perfected by by doing it in the air and it's good to have somebody next to you so you can hold the transmitter up and they can scroll and put the percentage okay that's perfect you know okay Uh, yeah but not only that but you know um some of these kids you know they get sponsorships and things like that and you know they want to be good representatives of the community and who they're and the sponsor they're representing and when they're at the field the local field or at a contest they see somebody struggling with something they can bring it up to them and be like hey listen have you tried doing this and then right. not only show them how to program it but that person would hopefully be receptive of that and and be able to you know take that with them in their RC career no doubt no doubt and and I will say that um just about all of the kids that I've been across at different contests that have been to Clover Creek. I've never seen one sitting down and not helping somebody or offering to help somebody. Um, you know, people, people be brand new that I know they've never met and it, and they'll be changing wheel pants even or whatever. And, and they get on their knees and down there and, and helping them and getting it done. And I think that's a real, uh, a tre- tremendous compliment to you and John both. Uh, thank you, Rich. And, you know, we, it was definitely important to, uh, to instill in them, you know, being uh, good ambassadors of the hobby in general, mm. you know, and, you know, giving back as much as been given to you, you know, and, you know, for my, like for myself, I, I, I can't, I, I can't even begin to name how many people have helped me in, in the beginning of my career, you know, and it, right. it's just, it, there's just something about, um, 
watching somebody grow and progress, you know, and become successful, you know, and then it just, it's, it's just something about it. It's just, it's, it's heartwarming, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And watching them do the same with, with other kids, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I, and I see them do that, um, all, all the time. Um, to kind of, uh, go back to, to Nats a little bit. Uh, you're our current, uh, Bennett cup holder and, and champion. Uh, when was the first year that in unlimited that you, uh, you won, uh, I guess the unlimited and then the, the Bennett cup. My, my first year was 2015. Um, that was the, actually the first year I, I permanently moved to, uh, Clover Creek and, um, it was actually the first year I flew, uh, John's Carden. Um, and uh-huh. that you know, up until then, I've always flown a, a Dalton, uh, extra ML. And mm-hmm. there was just, uh, something about that airplane that just kind of completely fit my flying style. Um, I think, you know, I, I kind of touched base on this, uh, on some interview questions that we had prior a few mm-hmm. years back. Um, you asked me about that and it just, that plane really just fit my flying style. It's like, I, I like saying it's like a tractor in the air. It's always trying maintaining the same speed for the most part. And, um, that's what, you know, really convinced me to get my own. And mm-hmm. that's what I'm still flying today. Okay. So you're still on the same, the same kit. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's I, awesome. Yep. I think, awesome. This, yeah. I think this will be its fourth season. Mm-hmm. I still see some, uh, some Daltons around, Yep. The, um, the, the key differences that you found in the two of them is, is a Dalton a faster flying airplane? Um, or? it's more streamlined, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. and like, um, there's ways to get it to slow, like the downlines for me were, were really fast. They happen fast. It's, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I felt myself flying much bigger, uh, to try to compensate for that as right as opposed to uh, the card in which I was able to keep tight because things were a much a slower flow, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I would agree. That's my experience as well uh, with them. So uh, 2015, uh, that was, uh, did you compete in the uh, 2014 worlds? I did. You did. And I, in what, in what class? Unlimited. Okay, you were an unlimited. Okay, what kind of experience was that first Worlds? Uh, the, the first the first Worlds was two thousand twelve. Was 2014? it twenty fourteen? Was it twenty fourteen? I think it was. It was twenty fourteen. That's right. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, that was a great experience. Um, you know, I was uh, I was happy that it was in the U.S. Um, and you know, we didn't have to go overseas. I couldn't imagine what shipping cost. Um, just talking with uh, like or not and some of those guys that go to the shootout you know and they just right. you know they could they could win the contest and it still doesn't really cover what their shipping cost <laughs> is you know um yeah, no but but yeah you know it was a good experience i i, I definitely enjoyed it mm-hmm. and uh it's it's well i guess it's probably not I, with the shootout and everything um you've you pretty much had met most of the pilots uh that were at the worlds or were you still uh, I, I, I think I knew probably a majority of them, you know, mm-hmm. 70, 70, 75% of them. Um, but a lot of the guys and even the people I knew, it was just acquaintances either through Facebook or social media of some sort. Um, and, but once I met them in person, um, that, you know, they were just, they were just even, it was just an even better experience, you know? And yeah. Prior, prior to that, um, like when John was putting on the Clover Creek Invitationals, um, mm-hmm. I got to, to meet to meet a lot of those guys, too. So and then they are, you know, it doesn't matter if what country you live in, everybody as far as a RC hobbyist, you know, is, is very much willing and open to help. You know, nobody's mm-hmm. very to themselves. And, you know, it's yeah. all we're all here for the same reason, you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. I, that's that's one of my uh, um, 
I would say one of the things that really keeps me going in the hobby is uh, getting to meet all these people and um, and being able to say, you know, somebody says, oh, you know, we went to Israel. You know, I know somebody in Israel or I know somebody in Germany or Australia or wherever. And um, and knowing they're good people and, and fun to be around. That's that's a pretty cool experience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we uh, we actually do uh, some stuff over in Israel as well. If I ever get a chance to go over there, I'm hoping to to meet up with Adi and you know some Absolutely. of those. Absolutely. Yeah that that's a uh, that's a real great experience. My wife and I did a pilgrimage over there, and he he took us to dinner and um, you know just oh. treated us like royalty. He's he's a tremendous guy, but uh, no doubt it's a uh, it's very interesting. One day. Maybe we'll get the fly over there and the, <laughs> fly in Israel, you know, for sure. Fair enough. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your your um, practice routines when it comes to, to the big contests. I know uh, you work a lot now, but if you had your way um, and you were coming up to, to Nats or to Whirls or to the shootout, what would be your ideal practice routine for that? And how early would you start? Um, so for like a big competition like that, uh, I think ideally, um, you know, about two weeks of practice. And when I say two weeks of practice, I'm not saying going out to the field every day and flying eight flights a day. Um, mm-hmm. A little bit at a time, uh, you know, fly ideally two weeks. Now, the camp, the camp we had. Uh, it was a month long, but the reason it was so long was because we had 10 students and each of us would probably get anywhere from three to four flights a day. And that was practicing also like as if we were at the Nats, like somebody's on the seventh maneuver, you're you better be flipping your prop with oh, your uh-huh. yeah. tail you know, and kind of getting them into that routine. So that way, when we get to the Nats, it's not, you know, anything new for them. It's, you know, they've already practiced for it. Um, but with that being said, we were still getting three to four flights a day now and single sequence, mind you. Um, mm-hmm. now if practicing just for myself, uh, I'd say two weeks because that would be enough to, uh, get very, uh, just right where you're not peaked out yet, but, um, where you're not burnt out. Mm-hmm. You've got enough, uh, confidence and you're flying. Um, I'd say two weeks, you know, ideally probably, you know, four to five flights a day, make it worth your time going out to the field. Um, right. you know, don't, don't land refuel and go right back up, you know, sit down, really analyze how your flight went, you know, have somebody else, uh, look at it. Like I'm lucky enough to have Ashley, uh, go with mm-hmm. me all the time because she not only knows what she's looking at for the most part. Uh, mm-hmm. she's able to call the sequence if I write it out for her in literature, right. um, or in words. And <clears throat> she, she kind of gets the basics as far as centering, you know, mm-hmm. uh, points off, you know, if you're off by so many degrees, um, and we're able to sit down and it was like, okay, honey, what'd you, what'd you think? You know, well, this, you know, kind of looked here that really didn't look like 45 and, you know, so it's good to have a second eye, especially. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And she's been, she's been around the, uh, the RC world for a while and I guess watching you compete for a good long time. Yeah. So, fair enough. Yeah. No, no doubt. Yeah. So when, when you, um, uh, you, you consider yourself prepared and you get to the, get to the Nats and I guess it's a little different from you than a lot of people. Cause you usually have, um, a gaggle of other people around that you're probably looking out after too, but, how do you prepare yourself for um, the day of flying and, and for that flight? Um, how do you get yourself mentally prepared and um, and ready to make sure that you're you're on for that flight? Uh, well, definitely a good night's sleep uh, mm. does it for me. Um, and um, you know the first the first flight, everybody's nervous. You know, and you know mm. it, it, it's amazing. You can I really don't judge somebody's how much how prepared they are off of their first flight because there's been numerous times any one of us has been like all over the place or right on the money you know so it's kind of a crapshoot uh for the as far as the first flight is concerned from my from my experience anyway um Mm -hmm. so and then you get used to the wind and and things like that and you just kind of 
calm and you know it's kind of settle in um but music uh definitely I, i've heard helps a lot of people um mm -hmm. uh i don't really care to listen to music right before a flight you know unless it's mm -hmm. freestyle of course um but i definitely eat you forget you forget to eat i usually pound a lot of water and i drink a lot of water as it is but Mm -hmm. uh, I try not to drink any energy drinks because that just makes me more nervous. I shake <laughs> as it, you know, like I need uh, maybe a cup of coffee to wake up and kind of wake your mind up. You don't want to be rolling up to the field half asleep. You know, you want to be kind of alert and ready to go, you know, um, mm -hmm. every morning for that matter. Um, so talking, talking and not being uh -huh. isolated to yourself, you know, creating conversation with people. It's easy to become clammed up and just not social you know um, right. it's good to have fun and oh yeah you want to do good you want to be the best you can uh but you know you got to take in mind that you know you're there to to have fun and enjoy what you love you know mm -hmm. you know it, it's good to have put the competitive nature aside for a second when it comes to, you know, socializing and things like that. You know, we're all there for the same reason to have a good time, be competitive. Be like, Hey man, damn, you smoked me on that flight or damn, mm -hmm. you really blew that damn snap. You know what I mean? But you know, it's, uh, yeah. So as far as being mentally prepared, there's, you know, definitely eating breakfast is a big, important one. You know, I like having something in my stomach because I, I get nervous as hell for every damn mm -hmm. flight. <laughs> you know, sometimes I, I, sometimes I go out there and I don't shake at all. I don't know what it is. I don't even notice it anymore. You know, I just become numb to it. But, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's something. Oh, well, well very good. Uh, also, along the Nats um, line, uh, you and Kurt, you, you kind of referenced this earlier. You guys have kind of traded on and off, uh, uh, you know, flying. What? What is it like and what is y'all's relationship like, uh, you know, flying together? And even when you're just flying at the same contest and not necessarily flying the same maneuver on the same <laughs> pattern at the same time. <laughs> I've got that so, on video. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? That was oh, my goodness. incredible year. Yeah. So uh, Kurt and I really have a, uh, a history. Um, as far as definitely for the Nets, um, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to that, we're definitely rivals. Um, and we, I know him and he knows me, you know, we'll, we'll say hi in passing and stuff like that. We'll have a couple of conversations, you know, throughout the contest. Um, but when it comes to actually competing, like, you know, I, he kind of lets me do my thing. I let him do his right. thing. I mean, uh, but we're always watching each other's flights. You can believe that, like like a damn hawk. You know what I mean? No doubt. So, um, but they, with that, you know, there's been some pretty incredible things that have happened. Um, you know, like you just mentioned that that one year was just the fact that we synchronized. You know, and it was almost yeah. like just a mirror image of us doing the same maneuver. You know, it's just I don't. I don't think even if you could try, you can make that happen again, you know? Right. And uh, <laughs> there was a couple times there where, like, you know, I'm watching my plane and I'm sitting there watching his at the same time. And I was like, is this really happening? You know what I mean? <laughs> you hear everybody in the background going nuts. It was pretty cool. And then, yeah. like, uh, not, not last year, but the year prior, um, and John always talked about it. And uh, it was the first time it happened. It was awesome. It, it was really it was really cool because uh john always said well it's possible that somebody could win their class and still not win the bennett cup right and i don't know if you remember i i won I them, but but kurt won the bennett cup and i think it was like by point point zero one points or something <laughs> some incredible crazy number um but that was that was really really cool and just like uh you know just a stamp in history there you know that that we were able to make that happen you know All right. so All right. well uh, it's it's certainly uh fun to watch and uh, you know a lot of people watched your flight and watched Kurt's flight but that time when y'all were synchronized I bet you there was not a head that wasn't watching those flights <laughs> I mean everybody was standing up watching those flights which is uh which was great to see for sure yeah. No. 
Well, good deal. Um, have you ever flown any of the other disciplines, uh, the uh, F3S jets or, or indoor or pattern? Have you ever tried any of that? I have not. Um, now, uh, one year, um, and this was after John passed, uh, Andrew uh, Jeske came out to the farm for a weekend and we hung out and he brought his plane. And uh, that was the first time I really ever flown um, that a pattern plane. And, um, of course his, his setup from what I hear is, is weird compared to everybody else's, you know, there's so much right. rudder authority. And of course you guys got integrated, uh, rolling elements and looping elements, um, which is understandable for that reason. Um, but it was definitely different aspect of flying. Um, mm -hmm. now when, you know, I say my card and flies like a tractor. Those planes are, are like a damn tractor flying through the yeah. air. It's they're the same speed the whole time. It's really incredible. And, um, you know, he's telling, he was explaining to me some of the rules and the discipline that goes into putting them together and weight and regulations and things like that, which is really cool. Um, now, that that's probably my really only experience uh, with that side, mm -hmm. uh, RC Aerobatics. Um, I got, I've gotten into scale. Uh, John uh -huh. and I, the Top Gun, uh, a couple years back uh, with a B-25, uh, we did pretty damn good. I think we took second, and uh, that was the first time he he's ever been, you know, on the competitive side at Top Gun, me as well. I used to go, of course, Top Gun used to be in Palm Beach way back in the day at the polo grounds. So uh -huh. growing up as a kid, you know, we would go over there and, and see it, and I've always loved just... Uh, the time that people take into to making some of these beautiful aircraft. Like I'm sure you watched Peter Goldsmith and some of the stuff that he posts yeah. on. And it's just, it's like, watch, there's like a hundred of him at this one event and you go around and you see all these damn aircraft and it's like, wow, you know, just no this, doubt. the creativity they get into making it look mm -hmm. as realistic as possible and then flying it. Uh, right. So, you know, yeah, so I, I've gotten into scale and stuff like that. Uh, I enjoy mm -hmm. that because it's it's kind of a different pace um, from from RC aerobatics. Um, so it's kind of, you know it's it, I like I like doing both because you know you can do too much of one thing, right. you know. So. Right, and I, and I I think some of us lose sight of that. You know, it's when you know when the guys do fly some jets or fly some pattern or fly iMac and they, you know, they're going like, uh, well, we're losing guys to this. No, you just guys are spreading their wings a little bit, in my opinion. You yeah, know, I think, I think, I think we gotta, we gotta keep our creative juices flowing. You know, sure um, enough. But uh, you know, I, I, I think it's it's important, and, and I know people are curious on what some of the other stuff you do. Out of out of curiosity, that you were working on a, um, I think it was a biplane a couple of years ago. Um, I can't even, yes. was, it Skip, was it Skip Messix? Um, no, uh, so, uh, yeah, John and I were putting together a, um, a, uh, a third scale, um, Waco, I'm trying, a Barth Waco, oh, okay. uh, and at the time during our judging school, uh, we had only the the bottom wing and the fuselage done, and we were kind of messing with people, telling them it was a, um, uh, not a steerman. Oh God, I can't even remember. But we had this little model, and we told we were telling people that's what we were building. But oh, okay, people finally caught on. But no, we were at the time we were building a Waco. Uh, but we had be prior to that, we had uh, put together a a Newport seventeen, which is re which is really cool. That was just something mm -hmm. to you know uh, fly around and burn some holes in the sky with. So yeah, no doubt. That's cool. That's yeah. cool stuff. So for a living you get to fly a little bit. What, what are you, what are you doing now currently? So, uh, I, I work for a company and we're basically, uh, contractors for, uh, target drones and we fly for, uh, the military, all branches, Navy, air force, army, uh, a lot of the army. Mm -hmm. Um, and we travel around the United States and around the world, uh, supporting, uh, the guys that, um, need to be recertified, um, on Avengers, uh, things like that for tracking, uh, shooting down, you know? Yeah. Gotcha. That must be a, um, um, 
a fairly growing industry because there's a lot seem to be a lot of guys in our hobby that that have moved to, to doing jobs within that industry. Yeah, um, I I'm I'm very fortunate uh, to be in the position that I am or I have the job uh, that I do, uh, which worked out really good. Um, you know, as the knowing that the farm was going to get sold, I started looking around at different things I could do. And of course, um, HVAC was something I had on reserve as well, um, that I, that I could do that I was knowledgeable with, but I wanted to do something, uh, with flying and, uh, AC Glenn reached out to me one day and, and said, Hey, uh, do any of your, uh, students, your camp kids looking for a job, uh, we're hiring some EP, which is an external pilot. I said, well, believe it or not, uh, I'm looking for something to do. And uh, I went over there and did a did an interview and uh, started in March of last year. And I've uh, been there for a year now. And it's a it's a blessing. It really is. I, I really enjoy what I'm doing. Um, you know, Ashley and I moved into a house and uh, it's it's great. It's great. You know, I get to see a lot of a lot of really, really cool stuff, you know, up until mm -hmm. up until March of last year. I've never been outside the United States. And, you know, here I am a year later and I've been to four different countries already. You know, so it's 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 pretty neat. It's it's really cool. I really enjoy it. And um, the guys I work with, we're all like minded. A lot of them um, are we have an IP and an EP an IP is an internal pilot, which is a guy that does all the autopilot stuff inside, uh, mm -hmm. EP guy that, you know, takes off and lands and what's not on the outside. Um, but, uh, as far as EPs are concerned, like I work with, uh, you know, AC, as you, as you well know, uh, Joe, mm -hmm. Joseph store, uh, mm -hmm. William Ramsey, uh, just came on board. Um, a lot of these, a lot of the guys too, you know, all fly model airplanes and, it's really neat to have, you know, it's basically like the, the guys you would go out to the flying field with, you know, yeah. so you're talking airplanes and, and stuff like that all the time. Well, that's great. Yeah. It's nice to be able to do something uh, for work that you really love doing. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very thankful. Well, good deal. Well, I really appreciate you taking all this time with me, Dave. It's hey, been a lot of fun. Anytime, Rich. I thank you so much for having me on. Well, yeah, it's, uh, I've been excited, uh, for the opportunity for sure. If, uh, anybody wants to uh, get in touch with you, do you have any social media or any way that they can uh, get in touch with you? I do have social media. Um, unfortunately I don't, I don't, I, I go on Facebook, but I, I, you know, messenger is a separate icon now. So like, I don't, <laughs> you know, I don't check it as much as I should. Uh, uh -huh. like I was telling Ashley, I need to get, you know, back, back into more social media. I'm kind of, uh, settled, settled in now, um, and not so much moving and, and, and getting a grasp on, on my job and how to be the best that I can at it. Um, so I am going to start getting more socially, um, uh, involved, uh, as far as social media is concerned. Um, now I do have, I still have my cell phone, uh, email is a good way to contact me. Um, you probably wouldn't agree with me on that based on, <laughs> based on our <laughs> email. <laughs> Uh, no, but I, no, no. I, 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 it might not be the next day, but I, I will get, I will get back with you. Um, oh, so absolutely. I, I appreciate you, uh, you, you coming on at all. That's, that's terrific. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll mention in the show notes to, to, uh, to put messages on Facebook. I think we'll probably leave your email and, and cell phone off the, uh, off the show notes just for a little bit of your privacy. Um, oh, no. But I, once again, I, I appreciate you coming on and best of luck with everything. And um, I look forward to uh, hopefully seeing you at Nats this year. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're looking at going. Uh, we're, we're not sure if we're going to be able to make that happen. Um, and and I'm not, I can't give you a definitive answer yet. Uh, Ashley and I are actually getting uh, uh, married in September. And uh, oh. so she might have something for you to do. <laughs> yeah so we're uh you know we're looking at that and then of course the honeymoon and whatnot and uh i just right. yeah and so we plan on going but i can't give you a definite answer right now trust me more mm. than anything i want to i just got uh i got a big boy job now and really don't That's have the, right. 
taking all all the time off that I that I used to be able to when I was working out at the farm. So yeah, well, well, no doubt. Well, well, well. Hopefully, we'll we'll get to see you soon somehow. That's for sure. Yes, sir. that's for sure. Well, yes, thanks sir. again, Dave. Take yes, care, sir. Rich. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to the episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. A very special thanks to my good friend, John Papagro, who wrote the song Deep in the Mud that is used as the show bumper music. Check him out on his website, www.johnpapagro.com. A link is in the show notes. See you at the next episode.